Welcome to lesson four of the topic vectors. This is introduction to elementary physics. If you have not viewed lesson three, do well to view it because whatever was said in lesson three is a strong prerequisite to the things that will be said here in lesson four. Also, do well to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and the notification button so that, so that you can get alerted anytime new lessons are updated. The link to lesson three is given to the description in the description of this video. I beg your pardon. Okay, uh, here we are talking about finding the direction of the resultant vector. Recall from lesson three, part A, that we said that from the parallelogram law of vectors, if you have two vectors inclined at an angle with respect to each other, the system can be developed into a parallelogram as we are seeing. Okay, and then we were able to use cosine rule to find the magnitude of the resultant. So here we'll be talking about finding the direction and we're going to need a knowledge of geometry, a little knowledge of geometry to do that. If we extend this line in a dotted way, this, this place with a dotted line, you agree with me that this angle here is equivalent to theta and theta is also equivalent to the angle of inclination between the original ve the vectors as they act at a point originally. And then this angle is 180 minus theta. And then we said from lesson three that the diagonal of this parallelogram represents the resultant of which, of which we have used cosine rule to find the magnitude of the resultant. So how do we get our direction? The direction of the resultant is given by this other angle alpha, alpha. So you can see there's a clear distinction between theta and alpha. While theta is the original angle of inclination of the vectors, alpha is the direction of the resultant, okay? This alpha is specified with respect to vector p. It could also be specified with respect to vector q, okay? Uh, now, from triangular law, that's part B of lesson three. If you have not seen part B, do well to view it. The link to part B of lesson three or the link to lesson three is given to the description of this video, in the description of this video. Okay, so from our triangular law, we had something like this. Okay, if we decide to still extend our knowledge of geometry, you will agree that this angle is 180 minus theta. And so therefore, we can specify this place as alpha, the direction of the resultant. Now, you can see that there's a strong similarity between the parallelogram method and the triangular method in terms of finding alpha, which is the direction of the resultant. Okay, to get that clearer, um, let's say we extract a triangle from the parallelogram as shown below. I think you can see the picture very clearly now. So whether by parallelogram law or triangular law, uh, basically, your mathematical analysis in finding alpha takes the same approach. And then the alpha, the angle alpha, is gotten by sine rule. I did mention previously that to do well to review sine rule and cosine rule in case you are not familiar with them because the scope of this lesson does not cover explanation of sine and cosine rule. So while the magnitude of the resultant is obtained by cosine rule, the direction is obtained by sine rule. Of course, you can also use cosine rule to find the direction of the resultant, but it will be easier, it will be quicker and faster to use cos um, sine rule. All right, thank you. Now, this is the triangle we are dealing with. If we want to use sine rule approach, this side, the resultant, is proportional to this angle. And then by sine rule, we say that r over sine 180 minus theta will be equal to this other side, Q being proportional to alpha, will be equal to Q over sine alpha. Okay, so this is a statement of sine rule. If you have a knowledge of R, the resultant, Q, and theta, you can find alpha. Okay, so I think that is uh, a little bit clear. Now, in our subsequent lessons, we are going to be taking examples to uh, portray and buttress and properly explain this concept. So this brings us to the end of lesson two, of lesson four, I beg your pardon, of the topic vectors. 
in the next lesson, lesson five, we'll be taking tutorial questions to illustrate triangular law and parallelogram law, how to find the magnitude of the direction of the resultant and also the magnitude using both methods. Okay, so do well to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and also the notification button so that you can always get alerted anytime new lessons are updated. All right, do well to also view the previous lessons, lesson one, two, and three. The link to lesson three is given in the de description of this video. And once you can locate lesson three, you will get the link, the links to the previous lessons as well. All right, thank you very much. See you in the next lesson.